we continue to converse uh, on the moral authority to lead. Leadership is such a demanding calling. It, it demands on, on, the, on the leader. It demands on the leader to be able to continually position themselves to where they have to declare their dependence on God, wisdom from God. And we always talk about Solomon and commend him because when he had given a great sacrifice and he was asked to name what he would want, when he had impressed God for a huge sacrifice, which the Rogians are yet to know whether he was talking about bulls or what, but it was a huge. But, it's, but he said what he needed was wisdom so that he can be able to rule over God's people wisely. And I just talk about the moral authority. I believe one of the most critical quality of any person who aspires for leadership is wisdom. And the Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. With all you are getting, get wisdom and get understanding. I did a series uh, of many sermons uh, some time earlier this year about the spirit of wisdom. It's one of the spirits of God, a spirit of wisdom. And you can never, never claim to have a more, the moral authority to lead people regardless of the numbers of the people you are leading, if you do not have wisdom. Because the opposite of wisdom is folly. And no one wants to follow a leader who is foolish. Because a leader who is foolish makes foolish decisions. And those decisions negatively impact everybody that is led. So those of you who as we go to a season where many people position themselves, I urge you to pray for wisdom. We are very, very concerned, those of us in the church, and we pray that the church will be able to live exemplarily because again, we cannot be able to correct, uh, to, co to give any correction to the politicians or to other civic leaders if we ourselves can be accused of the same thing that we see. But one of the things that has disturbed many of us is to see the, sometimes the degree of dishonesty uh, demonstrated by uh, those within the political class. And it worries us a lot because it's like, you, sometimes you wonder whether it is opportunism or what informs the, the various shifting that seem to take place and uh, uh, related matters. But quoting um, again uh, the Mayo Guardian and the statement by Ian Farr made on the 21st of April 2021, which is quite recent, leaders need to earn the moral authority to lead. Notice, you earn it. You can't buy it. It is earned. And how do you earn it? We have said it before. You earn it by the way you conduct yourself, the way you carry yourself, the way you are careful about the words you use. One of the things that worry us so much is to see the nasty words that come out from some of our people, some of the politicians, when they are attacking their, 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 their colleagues in their political seat. They use some unprintable words to attack. That means that is somebody who has no moral authority. Because even if you disagree with somebody, can you disagree with them respectably? Because none of us has the monopoly of all knowledge. We all are students and we keep learning. So you can't be able, you, you don't become popular within your political agenda because of the kind of words of insults that you use against anybody. And we, all we can appeal to Kenyans, let us watch the people as they go out there 
to persuade us about the votes they want so that at least we can know, do they have the moral authority to lead? Is there, mor is there mor morality? Uh, using power in hierarchy creates a culture of fear uh, and, uh, and, and uh, therefore what we must overcome is a culture of fear. And uh, we, we, we believe that culture has always been, like we said, culture has always been uh, informed by belief systems. So that is why those of us who are in church are persuaded by a culture governed by biblical truth and the life of our Savior Jesus Christ. And I like telling those who listen to me that my greatest loyalty is to Jesus Christ. And that is why I can say without fear of contradiction that nobody can claim uh, that they have paid me to talk this or talk the other because I consider myself as, a, as part of the, what gives me a moral authority is my sincere loyalty to Christ and devotion to his cause as a pastor, as a bishop of his people, that I must conduct myself in truth and honesty. I must be forthright in the things that I'm persuaded of. But I challenge you, wherever you are, as a believer, do you have the moral authority to lead if you're in leadership? And if you don't have it, can you do yourself a great favor by disqualifying yourself and doing something else that is not as demanding? Because I say what we do is demanding because we have to do the things we teach, we have to live true to the things we teach, and like Apostle Paul said, the things you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. And that is our responsibility. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for your desire for us to live responsibly and to carry ourselves in a way that honors you in everything we do in Jesus' name. Amen.